Hi third graders, this is Mrs. Blair and we are going to talk a little bit about graphic organizers today for our writing about reading course. Um, so what are they for? Graphic organizers are for um, helping us to brainstorm, get our ideas out on paper. I know it can be kind of overwhelming when you first start writing for your um, third grade test, so graphic organizers are really helpful, especially if you're a visual person. It helps you to gather information from the text. This is very important. Um, you can't just write whatever you want. You have to make sure that you reference the stories and the passages that you read prior to the um, questions that you've been asked. So it's important for that. Uh, it helps you to organize your thoughts and get everything um, in a in a order that makes sense. So you don't want to have to write something and have it just be all over the place. You want to make sure that there's a specific order to things that you're mentioning um, and that it is nice and organized. And then finally, it reminds us to cover everything. So you may have noticed when you read the uh, sample writing prompt for the first time in um, module two that it's quite a lot. It is a lot to take in and it's a lot to read all at once. So it's important to maybe draw some pictures or some visuals to help make sure that you're answering all of the parts of the question. So there are three, there are three types of graphic organizers that we're going to discuss today, but really we're going to focus on using one for this course because it's relevant to your final project, the final writing piece that you're going to write, uh, but I'm going to introduce you to a few just so that you're familiar with them and that you um, can use them in the future. So the first one that's very common that you may already be exposed to is a Venn diagram. And so a Venn diagram kind of looks like these two examples here. On the left hand side you have a traditional Venn diagram with two bubbles that converge in the middle. And then on the right side, you have a more complex Venn diagram with three bubbles that converge towards the center. And really, you would use these to compare and contrast either passages or topics. Um, and it's a really nice way to visualize similarities that would go in the middle and differences that go on either side. Um, so, for example, uh, you could use a Venn diagram in this way. So, like I said, you've probably been exposed to these before in reading class, um, comparing texts before, but I just thought it'd be fun to compare and contrast popcorn and potato chips um, because it gives you a nice visualization of how to use this diagram. So, on the left-hand side, you have popcorn and all of the qualities that have nothing to do with potato chips. So popcorn is puffy, it's made from corn, and it's cooked in butter or oil. Um, and then potato chips on the right hand side, these are all the qualities that have nothing to do with popcorn. So potato chips are thin and flat, they're made from potatoes, and they are cooked in oil. In the middle section is where you focus on the similarities or the things that each of the items on either side have in common. So in the middle for both, we have that they are snacks. They're both salty and crunchy. So very easily you can see how this Venn diagram works. Uh, the next graphic organizer that's very common that you are probably familiar with is a web. Um, you may have seen different variations of this, and I really like webs because um, it's really nice for uh, writing a paragraph when you put your main topic here in the middle and all of your details go out to the sides. Um, so, for example, we have uh, a web here that I've created to kind of show that. So the topic is spiders, and then on the outside you would in, you would include the details from your text that you may have read. So 
Um, they come in many different varieties. They are oviparous, meaning that they lay eggs. They have eight legs and can have varying number of eyes. Uh, and they spin webs to catch their prey. And then finally we have T-charts. And this is the graphic organizer that will be the most helpful for us in this module and the next. So this is the one we're going to spend the most time talking about here. T-charts um, are really helpful when you have two items or two topics or two passages to pull information from. So I've kind of given you a little outline here. This top section is really what your main topic is going to be about. So I usually like to put my topic sentence here. You can draw that from the prompt. Whatever it is asking you to discuss, you can pull that right out of the question. Um, and then here in this little green section where it says subtitle here, I like to put the title of the texts that I'm pulling information from. So if and very often the test will ask you to pull information from two passages that you've read. So in this side I will include information from this passage. Oops, let me go back here. There we go. <laughs> on this on this left side I'll pull information from one passage. On the right side I will pull information from the other passage. And then this dividing line down the middle um, will help me to organize my details from just this passage and my details from just this passage. Um, you will notice that in the prompt that we read this module, the T-chart is going to be the most helpful to us because the question asks to pull information from both of the earthworm passages that you have um, listened to um, in previous modules and that you are going to reread this, this module. So an example, um, I used the two passages that you read on Wonderopolis last module, uh, and they were both titled, uh, they were both about recycling, so um, I, let's just pretend for now that the question was asking the reader and the writer why it was important to reduce our waste and recycle. So my main topic sentence, like I said, can be pulled from that question. And I just wrote, it is important to reduce our waste and recycle. Very simple. Uh, and then I put the titles of the two articles on either side of the T-chart, and then I listed some details down below um, that can be used in my writing. Now, I wrote quite a bit here, but the great thing about graphic organizers is you can be as detailed or as short as you want. Um, it helps to be a little more detailed sometimes, but if you're really pressed for time, you can write in shorthand and use abbreviations for things. You don't have to write in complete sentences on graphic organizers because these are your notes. These are to help you when you write your actual piece of writing. It is not your actual piece of writing. So this is not going to be scored in any way. You will write this all on your scrap paper that they provide you for your test, and nobody's ever going to look at it but you. So you can write whatever you need to help you with your writing um, assignment. So thanks for watching. This is going to be really helpful for your next assignment, and good luck.